Now when the Pharisees and some of the scribes who had come from Jerusalem gathered around Jesus, they noticed that some of his disciples were eating with defiled hands, that is, without washing them. For the Pharisees and all the Jews do not eat unless they thoroughly wash their hands, thus observing the tradition of the elders. And they do not eat anything from the market unless they wash it. And there are also many other traditions that they observe, the washing of cups, pots, and bronze kettles. So the Pharisees and the scribes asked him, Why do your disciples not live according to the tradition of the elders, but eat with defiled hands? He said to them, Isaiah prophesied rightly about you hypocrites, as it is written, This people honors me with their lips, but their hearts are far from me. In vain do they worship me, teaching human precepts as doctrines. You abandon the commandment of God and hold to human tradition. Then he called the crowd again and said to them, Listen to me, all of you, and understand. There is nothing outside a person that by going in can defile, but the things that come out are what defile. For it is from within, from the human heart, that evil intentions come, fornication, theft, murder, adultery, avarice, wickedness, deceit, licentiousness, envy, slander, pride, folly. All these evil things come from within, and they defile a person. This is the gospel of our Lord. You may be seated. In the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit. Amen. How many of you have ever gone into a store and have a salesperson come up to you and say, can I help you? And you just say, no thanks, just looking. Right? Just looking, which we all mean, no means, go away. Right? Now, sometimes we're just looking because, well, we're a little bored. You know, we, we go just looking to sneak a peek at all those things at the mall or wherever that are, you know, a little bit beyond our reach. You know, pretending to study photos of yachts at the marina or walking into a car dealership parking lot, checking out the latest models that you won't be buying, or going to a jewelry store and maybe you try on a little bling here and there, seeing how they look on your finger or around your neck. Sorry, just looking. You know, some people spend their lives just looking but never really are willing to invest their energies or their emotions or economic secur security in anything because of the risk that might be involved. These are people who are permanently just looking. They, they drift in and out of jobs without really finding a vocation. They drift in and out of relationships without ever daring to love. They drift in and out of communities without ever casting a vote or dropping anchor. They drift, frankly, in and out of church without ever opening their hearts to the Spirit of God or the, to feel the pulse of Christ's body. And that's frustrating for those of us who know the joy of being in Christian community. It's frustrating for us who look around the church and see mostly gray hairs or no hairs and very few, shall we say, long hairs sitting next to us. Frustrating for us that as we careen from one fad to another told to us by some expert or another, sure that that's the magic bullet in, in, to fill up our pews. Our second reading this morning reveals an author who obviously felt a similar sense of frustration with those who were pew-sitting bench warmers. The writer reminds us that just hearing the words, just hearing the good news of Jesus Christ is simply not enough. We are called to be doers who act. 
And there's a lot of precedents in the Bible for action without a plan, but very little, little evidence for plans without action. I mean, I mean, come on, Abraham didn't have a plan, did he? But he packed up and he left home. Moses didn't have a clue. But he confronted Pharaoh with an ultimatum. Rahab didn't have a friend, but she hid Joshua's spies in Jericho. Elijah didn't have a hope, but he defeated all the prophets of Baal. Nehemiah didn't have a country, but he rebuilt the wall of Jerusalem. Mary, Mary didn't have a name, but she bore the Son of God. John the Baptist didn't have a home, but he made a w- the wilderness his pulpit. And Peter, well, he didn't have a backbone, but he became the rock of the church. And Saul of Tarsus, boy, he did not have a heart. But, but Paul became the spokesperson for the Gentiles. And, of course, Jesus Christ didn't have a sin. But he suffered and he died on the cross for our sake and for our salvation. Faithful Christians must be doing and not just looking. See, the whole, the whole crux of faith is that, well, we don't know every last detail, every contingency, every possible development that awaits us. But we do know, we do know who is in charge. And a life of faith demands that we work hard, but know that ultimately God is the one who is in total control. James also targeted the self-righteous so-called Christians who felt they were good enough and probably better than anybody else. And these, these were, are people who, well, they, who know scripture and they come to worship and do all the right religious stuff. But in their daily lives, there's no proof of their faith. Again, as we heard earlier, but this time from the Good News translation. Do not deceive yourselves by just listening to his word. Instead, put it into practice. If you listen to the word but don't put it into practice, you're like, you're like people who look in the mirror and they see themselves as they are and they take a good look at themselves and then they go away. And at once they forget what they look like. You know, if you think about it, James kind of hits a nerve there, doesn't he? I mean, how often do we hear about Sunday Christians who wake up on Monday as though they've never been in church at all? That they're sitting in the premises but not acting on the promises once they go out those big oak or those big glass doors. You see, my family of faith, worship truly is a seven-day-a-week experience. Now, what I'm saying here is that, yes, of course, there are some Christians who do continue worshiping on Monday, witnessing to the living Christ by lives dedicated to his service. But there are far too many others who have left their worship life at the altar. My brothers and sisters in Christ, we cannot compartmentalize our faith. It is never a case of Sunday for God and the rest of the week for me. Faith you see, is a continuing, continuing walk with Christ. Do you get it? Are you, do you hear what I'm saying? Are you listening? After all, the first step in faith is listening, you know. If you don't hear the word, there can be no gospel. There can be no good news. And we need to hear that gospel. We need to hear that good news repeated over and over and over again because It can get drowned out by the myriad of other noises that surround us each and every day. Television blasting us with directions on how we should vote or think or what we should eat and what we should drink. Us bowing our heads, not in prayer, but looking at the latest thing that popped up on our cell phones. You know, turn off the TV or the radio or the cell phone and turn on to the good news of Jesus Christ, our Lord. We need to be good hearers who don't forget the good news of Jesus Christ. 
We need to be good hearers who let the word of God take root in our very hearts so that our actions can be enriched and motivated by Christ rather than our own self-seeking egos. After all, need I remind you that we're not working our way into heaven, you know. God's love isn't like a credit card where we have to work and work and work in order to build up our love limit. No, God loves us so much that he sent his only son to live among us as one of us to die for us and then was raised from the dead so that we no longer have to fear death and sin. No, no, we don't have to. But our actions, our actions show the kind of stuff that we're made of. And like all human beings, we need others to be our mirror, mirror to help us hear what we didn't hear or see what we didn't see. We need to learn, yet we also need to learn to listen. And then, and then, having heard the word of Christ, Christ will grow in our hearts so that our religion becomes, as James described, quote, pure and undefiled before God the Father, to care for the orphans and the widows in their distress, and to keep oneself unstained by the world. This epistle, who Martin Luther called an epistle of straw, but there's so much more to it than what Martin Luther thought. This epistle challenges us to give more than lip service to the Christ we so love. We are called to a lifestyle that is rooted in, in our faith. And if we do this, if we do this, if we become not only hearers of the gospel, but doers of the gospel, then we will be doubly blessed because then we will have been a blessing to others. Amen.